Someone suggested that I use one of these kitchen vlogs to talk about my landscaping, some of the work that I've done outside, some yard work. And I've got a lot of pictures because I took a lot of pictures along the way. So that's what I'm going to show you. There's no reason to bring my video camera outside and video it because I took a lot of pictures. But the first thing I want to show you is my shed because <laughs> all bragging aside, no. All humility aside, I have the best looking shed in the entire trailer park. <laughs> Let me show you. But first of all, I want to show you what I had before. So let's look at some photographs. This is my old shed. I took pictures, started taking pictures after I took the roof off. So um, this was a, an old aluminum shed. It was here when I moved in and it was in bad shape when I moved in. I knew I had to do something because this was obviously falling apart. Um, termites had gotten to it it was a mess and I was afraid that the wind at some point if we had a really bad windstorm was going to pick up some of this aluminum and just fly it up into the air into my neighbors homes or worse yet into a neighbor so I figured I've got to do something so I get rid of this dangerous thing so I started taking it apart so I could recycle all the aluminum just to show you how bad it was look at this picture this is the wooden framing after I took the aluminum off. It started to collapse on its own. Literally, the framing wasn't holding up the shed. The aluminum siding <laughs> was what was holding up that shed. The, the wood just started to collapse. And again, it was all ruined by termites. You can see there was a big hole in the floor where the termites had gotten through there, weakened the floor. So I tore all this stuff out. Got down to the dirt. This was what was holding it up. A few cinder blocks. Um, it was a mess. So I cleaned up the entire space, leveled the ground as best I could, and then brought in a contractor. And this is what the contractor did. He put down a um, concrete slab and started framing with real 2x4. I mean, this is really, this is done like a house would be framed. So it's framed with two by four. I've told people that if we ever have a tornado in this area, we, if we ever get tornado warnings, I've never heard of one, but I'm leaving my house and I'm going out to my shed because the shed is built better than my home, my mobile home. So he started putting up the walls and then started putting the roof up. You're starting to see it take shape and then started putting the siding on. That's the guy over there on the left in that red Honda shirt. This is him, that paneling he's holding is actually the external paneling that's going up. And this is what it looks like complete. And that's him again here on the right, just coming around the corner. All fire resistant materials on the outside. Everything full in line with all county and city ordinances. That's a beautiful shed. If you're wondering how much that shed cost me, I spent $8,000 having that shed built. Yes, I could have gone over to Home Depot and got a thing for $600. Look at to the left. You can see the plastic shed that one of my neighbors has. It's already falling apart. Why spend a little bit of money and get a piece of junk? Why not get that, spend a lot of money, have a really nice shed, and then when I ever go to sell my home, that will increase the value. As far as the inside, this is what I did on the inside. I bought some wire shelving, stainless steel, chromed wire shelving, put that on the inside, and that's when I started stacking all my stuff in there. Okay, so that's my shed. Now I want to go to my landscaping. So now we can start looking at what I did for my landscaping. I had lawn before that I would have to mow at least once a week. I hated mowing the lawn. It just seemed so unnecessary and because of the drought here in Southern California we had to be very careful about watering so it's you can't keep it green because if you keep it green people know you're wasting a lot of water on your lawn time to get rid of it so this is what I did here's my first picture that I took this is my front yard you can see my car there parked in the front because I had materials stacked in my driveway I dug out all of my grass and then I would sift all that dirt to get rid of all the roots because I didn't want any grass growing after I put in the stone and the daimondia. So I would clean up the whole area, 
This is the side that I'm working on. You can see to the left here is the dirt that's been sifted. To the right is the grass that I'm removing. And way to the far left, you can see some stone already being laid down. That's what I would do is I would clean up a section, get it ready. I would lay in stone and then I would move to the next section. So little by little, I was working around my home. This is what it would look like when I was ready for the stone, all sifted, cleaned. That's my backyard toward the top there. And then this is me on the other side of that porch working toward my my backyard. And again, you can see the stone. Some of those stone pieces were really big. I used small pieces and I used some really big pieces. I'll show you those in a little bit. But this is the working toward the backyard. And then this was my backyard area. This was the hardest work because it was a, a really big area. It doesn't look very big, but it extends from the road all the way over to my shed. You can just see the bottom of my shed there at the top. As far as that wire mesh that's in there going in under the dirt, we have gopher problems here in the park. And I was told that gophers like to chew on the roots of Daimondia, which is my ground cover. I'm going to show you that in a bit. So to protect my, my ground cover, I put wire mesh down under the dirt when I put down the... Um, the dirt and then the stone. You can see stone very upper left there going in. This is the stone that I was using. I would order it a pallet at a time. Expensive. I want to say it was like eight or nine hundred dollars for a pallet. Um, that was about 600 pounds or maybe it was a ton. I don't remember. I went through several of these pallets. This, this was the small stone that I would order and I would get these pallets one or two at a time. This is the big stone. Those were huge and heavy pieces. I, I bought two of them because that's what they had at the time. I figured I might as well get both. And those pieces, I would either use them whole in some areas or I would cut them or break them. You can cut them with a sledgehammer and a chisel and it's, it's doable. You can cut a nice straight line. It's, it's, you can get a very accurate cut. It just takes a lot of time to do all that cutting. But that's how I got my stone and I went through several of these pallets of stone to get my yard done. And then in this picture, you can see that I started planting the Daimondia. You buy it in a flat and it's just little pieces. It's already rooted. It's ready to plant. And you just work it into the soil and then keep it moist. You have to water it like every two or three days. People complained about how much water I was using, but I told them this is just to get it rooted. Once it's established, I only have to water like once a month once every three weeks at most. So this is how it started. And then I'm going to show you next how it ended up looking. This is how the yard looks now. I took this photograph this morning and you can see how that Diamondia has all filled in. It's grown up. It's nicely rooted. I don't have to worry about it. I can water it once every three or four weeks. You can see in this kind of center bottom area that it's a, a lighter color. It's a little bit greener in the back. When it starts to turn white like that, that's Daimondia telling you that it needs to be watered. They call it also silver carpet because underneath the, the underside of the leaves is silver. And what happens is if it starts to get too dry, the leaves start to curl up and expose the silver. And then you see that white and that tells you it's time to water. So I watered all of my yard this morning. You can see the road there in my driveway is a little bit wet in the back. And those are my citrus trees, three of my citrus trees. The middle one up against the wall there, that's the one that's struggling. I'm trying to save that tree. The, the insects got to the leaves and it's still doing okay. It's, it's blooming and there's fruit. I'll show you more about that in a minute, but that's the one I'm working with. This one over here near the corner in that light colored pot, that was a, a trouble for a, a while because um, leaf miners had got into the leaves. I sprayed it, got rid of those, and now that tree is flourishing. So I know that one in the middle will eventually start flourishing too. This is on along the side. Again, you can see how beautifully that Diamondia has all filled in. Along the wall, those small pots. That's my little outdoor herb garden. Those aren't doing really well. <laughs> I haven't been taking care of them as well as I should have. The, the rosemary is doing the best. And then you can see two more plants here to the right. Those, again, are two of my citrus trees. This is the side yard toward the back. Again, look how beautifully 
that diamondia has all filled in. My whole yard pretty much looks like that. I have a few more areas to finish up as far as the diamondia. You can see over here, this is the backyard. To the right is where I'm filling in with diamondia just to finish up. Toward the back there up near the shed, you can see what looks kind of weird, those things on the ground. That's netting that I put down to keep the raccoons out because the raccoons will dig up the diamondia as soon as I plant it. I don't know why they like to dig it up, but once it gets rooted and established, they can't dig it up. It's really hard to dig up. So when I plant it, I cover with that netting, that uh, chicken wire netting. It's plastic, actually. It's not real wire. And that keeps the raccoons out. That's how my yard looks. Now here's a picture of my citrus trees. This is the one that's struggling, but it's still producing flowers and it's still uh, producing some fruit. I can show you some fruit here. Here's the little fruits that are developing. The problem is they don't stay. They don't stay on the, the branches. You can see there's three empty buds there where those little round fruits is are, have already fallen off. I don't know why, whether it's because the tree isn't mature enough that it's not really able to support the fruit, or maybe it's that the leaves, because they got eaten up a lot by insects, maybe the tree isn't healthy enough right now to support the fruit. But as I said, as I'm going to continue working with that tree, I think it's going to be able to flourish like the others. This is the weirdest one. These are the flowers on my Buddha's hand, and I'll show you the Buddha's hand here. That's what they look like. I didn't know what these were at first. I thought I had some sort of aliens from outer space <laughs> tree. It's these long finger fruit. It's citrus, but they're called Buddha's hand. A friend actually found it online and he told me about it and I looked it up and that's what they are. They're, they're, they're um, these Buddha's hand lemon, I guess. They'll be yellow and they get really big. This tree's got about seven or eight of them on it and more are on the way. This tree is doing real well. This tree did nothing for like a year and now it's flourishing. This is how big it gets. Look at my hand there. That's the biggest fruit and I'm waiting for this one to turn yellow. Once it turns yellow, then what people do is they, can, they slice it thin and there isn't a lot of juice inside. It's mostly white, but it's not bitter white like the pith under a lemon or an orange peel, orange rind. It's supposed to be not bitter and they slice it thin. You can put the pieces in oil or in alcohol to flavor them, give them a citrus flavor. Some people will candy them and just eat them with their hands. So those are my citrus trees. Those are, that is my landscaping. That project, by the way, took me just eight weeks. I had eight weeks to get it done. I worked out there every day, not 10, 12, even eight hours. I would work wherever I could find shade. So in the morning I would work on one side when it was in the shade and then take a break and in the afternoon I would work on the other side when it was in the shade and little by little I was able to work that whole yard and get it all cleaned up. It took me eight weeks. The um, landscaping cost me around seven thousand dollars and I've spent a little extra money on the um, on the diamondia I already told you the shed was $8,000, but those were the big projects. That and a plumbing project. I had to um, have the pipe in my house replaced because, well, I can show you a picture. The pipe under the kitchen sink broke and I was able to make it work <laughs> with a piece of plastic tubing and some hose clamps. I got it to hold while the plumbers were giving me an estimate and, and telling me what they were going to do. That I think was a three or four thousand dollar project. They replaced all the galvanized pipe with copper pipe and not copper tubing, but real copper pipe. And they did a beautiful job. So my whole house now has been all fitted, all plumbed with copper uh, all the way out to the outside where the connection is. So I don't have to worry about um, plumbing anymore. Those were the three biggest projects that I had to work on. Now that that's all done, I'm just living in retirement. I'm relaxed. I'm enjoying myself. For So for those of you who wanted to um, see some of the projects, those are the projects that I've talked about in my blog. Now I've got it covered with pictures in my kitchen vlog. So thanks. Thanks for listening. If you enjoy what you're seeing, please uh, feel free to subscribe and tell others about my kitchen vlog as well.